Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Brandon Keith Avery and I want to welcome you to Just My Opinion number two. Today we're going to discuss, in my opinion, the top 10 superhero comic book or just comic book movies of all time. Before we dive into the top 10, I just want to mention some honorable mentions. And coming in at number 12 is the Wolverine Unleashed Extended Edition. And I stress that enough, I am not talking about the theatrical version. I'm talking about the extended, unrated, extended, special, super duper edition. The reason why I like this one a lot more is because it has more action, it has more blood, and it has more story. Especially when I was talking about story, if you've seen the end of this movie, where Logan is having a confrontation about the guy that wants to extend his life. Probably didn't do much for you, it didn't do much for me, it didn't do much for anyone. But if you've seen the extended cut, it goes back not only at that point, but other points into the film, going back to when they first met, that they were in the well when Logan saved his life. There's a lot of flashbacks between that scene of the conversation and the movie goes on that makes the ending that much better. Of course, I all like the, the extra action. If you saw the theatrical version of this, you know that there was a botched ninja scene at the end that only was like five seconds long. In the extended edition, there's a full fight scene and of course, there's blood everywhere all throughout the movie. Nothing frustrates me more than Wolverine with animatium claws slicing people up, but there's no blood splatter everywhere. But in this movie, we have the CGI blood that makes it much better coming in at number 12. All right, coming in at number 11 for an honorable mention is Brian Singer's X-Men Days of Future Past. Now, a lot of you may be flipping your wigs right now talking about, oh, what the hell? How does it not make it into your top 10? It's such a great movie. Yes, this is a great movie. That's why it's coming in at number 11, but there are 10 more that I like better. And I also have some complaints about this that I never really see anybody address. What doesn't make sense to me is, first of all, in this film, which I am talking spoilers, how did they capture Magneto? It just doesn't make much sense. He's one of the most powerful mutants out there. He's probably one of the most powerful fictional characters ever created. But in this movie, we, f we first meet him in a non-steel cage at the bottom of the Pentagon. And it just makes no, they never explain how they caught him. He is just too powerful. And another thing that doesn't make sense is when they had Peter Dinklage playing a uh, baller for trash in this movie, when they were having the, the conference at the beginning with all the government officials and one of them said, okay, if these mutants are living among us, they are living peaceful lives. And the only recorded incidents we have was over 10 years ago. So not even the majority of the government knows about mutants, nor their power or how powerful they can be. Yet uh, still, they're able to catch Magneto and that, that, that just doesn't add up to me. Now, one thing that this movie did do extremely well is the quick service scene when they were capturing Magneto. Everyone thought, including myself, that thought that that scene was going to be trash, but it was one of the best scenes in the whole movie. But what I did not like about the movie is like five minutes after that, instead of keeping him on the team to go and go save the day, it was like, okay, thank you for saving our asses. We're about to go save time now, but you know, we'll just catch you next time and next mission. It didn't really make sense to me. Didn't really care for that. Also, another gripe with the movie is still great is I, I wanted to see more of the future. Still a great movie, as you see. I, I got, I bought it, so it must be good. So that comes in at my number 11 uh, honorable mention. All right, guys, we got the honorable mentions out the way. These are the top 10 movie, comic book movies of all time, in my opinion. And coming in at number 10 is Mark Webb's The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I really did love this movie. A lot of people didn't. I don't understand why. <laughs> I'm going to stop. I'm just joking. Um, I hated this movie. This is possibly one of the worst comic book movies of all time. And I just threw that in there as just a joke. And if you're wondering why I have a copy of that crap, my friends of mine know how much I hated the movie, so they got it for me last year as a gag gift, and it is nowhere near my top 10, but we'll take things seriously now. All right, guys, seriously now, these are my top 10 comic book movies of all time in no particular order. Coming in at number 10 is Marvel's 2012's The Avengers. Josh Whedon, he knocked this one out of the park. It was a great film. There was a small hiccup 
uh, during the middle with Loki and him finding out all the Avengers powers and their abilities and what makes them and what breaks them. They really didn't explain that, but they explained it in a deleted scene. And at the end, I also could have used a lot more Hulk. There was not enough Hulk in this movie, but it was still great. This movie is an A minus to me. That's why, I mean, it wouldn't be good if it wasn't. It, it's good since it's in my top 10. So if you haven't seen it, I'm sure you have 1.5 billion worldwide. All right, next on my list, it's a little film that Zack Snyder did, and that is Man of Steel coming out a year after The Avengers in 2013. This movie has uh, mixed reviews. I'm on the end that loves this movie. I don't understand why so many people don't, given their argument. No, the movie is not perfect. It does have its flaws, but overall, it, it to me, out of any comic book movie adaptation ever, Man of Steel has the best action out of all of them. That's just my opinion. If you don't feel that way, that's perfectly fine. But the ending battle between General Zod and Superman, Man of Steel, Clark Kent, was phenomenal. We got to see Superman and Zod use all of their abilities, all of their power at the absolute, absolute maximum. And that's what I want to see. The only power we did not get to see Superman use was his ice breath. But that's okay because in this movie, he was only Superman for like a day, like six hours. So he's learning how to use his abilities. He's learning how to adapt. He's learning how strong and how weak he is and how to maneuver, fly around, punch, defend, etc. Another gripe that people um, had to complain about is this wasn't the Superman they know, but that's not a problem for me because it's a true origin story. He doesn't know who he is. He's only been Superman for a short amount of time. And in that short amount of time, I think they did a great job the beginning of this film is perfect when they're on Krypton. I, I love this movie, it's great. Thumbs up, this is definitely in my top 10. Man of Steel, directed by Zack Snyder. It's next on my list, so you can possibly consider it number eight, but I'm not going in any particular order, is Jon Favreau's Iron Man 1, the thing that started the whole MCU off, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This movie is fantastic. It is an A++ to me. It is a perfect 10. I could not find anything wrong with it if I've tried. I can watch this movie over and over and over again from beginning to end. I don't need to skip around. It's great. It's great action. It's funny. Great stories. Great character. It's a great jump start to the MCU. I only wish that John Favreau would, ha would have had as much creative control on Iron Man 2 and if he accepted Iron Man 3 that he had on this one because he knocked this one out of the park. This was phenomenal and I love this movie. Coming in at number seven, or again, no particular order, is 2005's Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins. Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. It is the origin of Batman, the master ninja detective that is taking no names and blowing up brains in Gotham City. He faced off with Ra's al Ghul. There was great martial arts there, great training, great training montages. It's so super duper realistic. It wants the nasty crap taste out of our mouths that was Batman and Robin and Batman Forever. Freeze! I will never forget that, unfortunately, but you know, this Batman Begins helps me wash those horrible memory nightmares out of my brain. But this is great. Pretty much everything Christopher Nolan does is fantastic, and this is one of them. I mean, this is a fantastic movie. Whether you like comic book movies, Batman or not, this you will appreciate something about this movie because of the realism, and I really love the training. I love the fighting. It is awesome. It is epic. That's why it's in my number 10, Batman Begins, directed by Christopher Nolan. I love this movie. All right, next on the list belongs to the sequel of Batman Begins, 2008's The Dark Knight. Man, hold up, man, hold up. They did this with this movie right here. It is awesome. I mean, the Joker played by Heath, Heath Ledger, rest in peace, is by far the best portrayal of a villain in any comic book movie ever. I mean, this is phenomenal. If, this jo if we got this Joker in the real world, we would be up a creek and there would be a lot of dead people and sad faces and crying eyes because Heath Ledger's portrayal in this film was amazing. He deserves the Oscar that he won for this. It is amazing. Christopher Nolan did a phenomenal job. Now, I will say out of these two, which ones are your favorite, Brandon? Which ones are your favorite? They're so close. I mean, if one of them is like a 9.5, the other one is like a 9.25. But I will, I, I will have to give it to uh, Batman Begins. The only reason I'm giving it to Batman Begins is 
is because me and my personal taste, I like martial arts and the choreography and fighting. And this had, yeah, this had more of it than The Dark Knight. There was not, you know, he fought some pit bulls and, you know, a couple of thugs. But this one actually had martial arts training against a martial arts master in the end. But they're both, like, right there. I mean, I like, I like Batman Begins this much more than The Dark Knight. But th there you go. That is The Dark Knight 2008 Christopher Nolan. I love this movie. All right, guys, we got the first five out the way. Not saying that the next five are better than those. This is in no particular order. But the next film on my list is Joe and Anthony Russo's 2014's Captain America, The Winter Soldier. This movie is awesome. This movie is amazing. It gave me everything that I wanted and nearly more. I love that we got to see the Winter Soldier, Captain America, the Black Widow, and Falcons, all of their abilities. We got to see them. I mean, if you were to read a description of each of their powers and abilities, the movie hit every check. You know, even Nick Fury got some action in this, and I love this movie, it's great. If they can repeat what they did with Civil War, Captain America Civil War, what they did in Winter Soldier, we're in for a treat. And this movie makes me look even more forward to Anthony Joe Russo directing Avengers Affinity War Part 1 and Part 2. I love this movie, um, it is fantastic. Captain America, The Winter Soldier, I love this movie. Next on our list, belongs to a franchise that was canceled and rebooted shame on you sony you shouldn't have done it but this one right here spider-man 2 not the amazing spider-man 2 but spider-man 2 I, I cannot believe i forgot uh the director's name i know this dude but anyway maybe it'll come to me at the end of this video but for right now i'm having the brain fart but Tobey Maguire's peter parker as spider-man was fantastic we got a great villain dr octopus um i mean in this movie you really cared about what peter was going through and what was going on i mean he was balancing being a superhero with just being a normal person and well he graduated high school in the first one a young adult life and it, it just wasn't fair. I mean, he 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 wanted just he wanted to love and go and play and 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 be on picnics and go on dates and go to the movies and study and read books, but he couldn't. He was obligated to save lives, and it was getting over in his personal life, and it was eating away. Uh, Sam Raimi directed this. My goodness, it just came back to me. But it was eating away at him inside. You know that. You know, he wasn't able to do everything he wanted to do and he felt obligated and you really felt for him. You did. And there was not that much action in this movie, but when it was, it hit hard. The only thing that didn't make this movie like a perfect 10 to me is why I thought the, the bank robbery action scene and then the clock tower that transitioned over to the a subway train. I thought those action scenes were better than the final one. And I kind of feel like the final one should be either the same as the previous or better. But I, I thought it was lacking. But other than that, this is a fantastic film. I don't have any kids, but if I one day if I do knock 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 I'm gonna hey dad teach me about spider-man I'm going straight to this one right here and the 90s cartoon because this is an amazing movie and so is that cartoon which made me love spider-man in the first place this is an amazing movie Sam Raimi thank you so much for giving it to us this is great that's why it's in my top 10 I love this movie all right guys we're down to uh the last three it's in no particular order but this one goes to the man that left and man it that, that's edgar wright with scott pilgrim versus the world i didn't know what to expect when i saw this movie but when i saw it i'm glad i did because i was blown freaking away i have never seen anything like this in my life there is no movie that's ever existed that is remotely close to anything like this in life it is a hybrid of live action fighting and video games all ball up into one and it is amazing this movie is like a 9.75 for me the only reason i don't give it a 10 is because i hate opening credits and this very beginning of this movie they have an epic big crazy lovely scene and then it cuts to opening credits where it just flashes names i hate that and it clocks me out but other than this this movie is fantastic and i loved it if you haven't seen it get it because edgar wright is a genius and I love this movie. Coming in at number two is a movie that's probably on your list as well and definitely on mine and that is X-Men First Class. This one restarted the whole X-Men franchise. I thought this movie was gonna suck by Fox. You knocked this out of the water. It was perfect, 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 perfect. I cannot find anything wrong with this movie. I got to see 
all of the characters used their abilities at full potential and it was great because it was an origin story they couldn't go full fledged because they didn't know how to use their powers and that fit within the story i hate when i see an action movie or a comic book adaptation and i adaptation and i don't see the characters using all the potential all the powers all the abilities and that's what i got this one right here and i loved it so thank you very much matthew vine you knocked it out the park you're probably one of the best comic book movie directors um, ever and uh, thank you matthew vine this is a great movie i love this movie all right guys last but not least one of my favorite movies of all time let alone be top 10 comic book movies and that goes to another matthew vine film that is kick ass man so many people slept on this movie and it didn't make enough money and that is a shame because it is freaking awesome this movie is the most realistic comic book movie ever this can actually happen in a movie i mean in real life and man i really believe that and if you find me crazy i don't care i don't give a damn this movie is amazing i mean imagine what would happen if a guy with no training no powers nothing just dressed up as a superhero and wanted to go out and fight crime He'd probably get his ass kicked and he did get his ass kicked and he got his ass kicked in the best most phenomenal way and i love every moment of it i mean i showed this movie to my mom my mom who could give a crap about stuff like this she looked at me during the middle of it like brandon i gotta admit this movie is actually love the way it's how it's turning out the story and it, it, it's a great story it's a great cast it's great characters it's great everything i love this movie you should get it too because i love it it is great kick ass thank you very much matthew vaughn all right guys i'm back and just to recap again my honorable mentions are X-Men Days of Future Past, Wolverine, The Wolverine, The Extended Unrated Edition, Top 10 goes to Captain America, The Winter Soldier, Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight, Edgar Wright's Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, Matthew Vaughn's X-Men First Class, Josh Whedon's Marvel's The Avengers, Matthew Vaughn's Kick-Ass, John Favreau's Iron Man 1, and last but not least, Zack Snyder's Man of Steel. Guys, these are my top 10 comic, best comic book movies of all time, but that's just my opinion, and I would love to hear yours as well. Whether you agree or disagree agree with me, please put your comments down below. I want to get the conversation going. I want to talk about it and see what yours were. Just because you know I like something doesn't mean you have to and vice versa. So comment below. Let me know what you think. Go ahead and give me that thumbs up. I don't mind. Give me the thumbs up. Also, subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can hear all my other opinions on stuff and movies and cool things that come out and i can review movies and talk spoilers and all that crazy stuff which is so subscribe and also share the video you know i'm not gonna get mad if you share it. it's okay you can share the video it's all good guys thank you for tuning in to just my opinion episode number two and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon keith avery and that's just my opinion peace